Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope you've had a great day. Hope you're having a good week. Um, we're almost through to another weekend. Woohoo! Um, hope, hope it's been a good one for you. I really do. Um, last week was kind of rough for me, but this week has been much better, so I'm very glad for that. We just got in from church, um, as always. Had a good service. Enjoyed just seeing everyone and um, just getting that refreshment I need from God for the rest of the week to get me through till Sunday. And I'm already looking forward to Sunday uh, just to see what God's going to do. I just love my church family so much. But anyway, I just want to read, you know, I read the other night uh, Romans chapter 8. And I said something about maybe doing a little bit, not really a series, I don't want to call it that, but just maybe a couple of nights on a few verses in Romans chapter 8. Because it's such a good chapter. It's so full of good um, meat for your soul, for your spirit that you can feast on and go back over it and go back over it again and still get something new out of it every time. That's what I love about God's Word. But this is Romans chapter 8, starting with, um, we'll start with verse 15. It says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, to whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So what that saying is that once we become a Christian, once we become saved, um, if you want to think of it as adoption, God adopts us. Um, and it's it says, you know, that we receive the spirit, um, we did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So it's letting us know that we have a connection with God. Um, he becomes our Father, you know, through adoption, through the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son. Um, and it says we're we're heirs with Christ. We're joint heirs with Christ. And it says if we suffer with Him, um, then we may also be glorified together. So it's letting us know that no matter what we go through on this on this life or on this earth in this life. We go through many trials and tribulations and tests, uh, things that feel like it's going to knock us down um, off of our feet, and we try to get back up, it knocks us down again. But that's a promise right there from God, that we are His children. We are God's children. If we've been bought by the blood of Jesus, we're God's children. We can cry out to Him any time, Father God, I need help. Daddy God, I need help. And he's going to help us. And it says you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. F fear. Now there's another place in the Bible that says fear has torment. And it does. Uh, if you're really truly honestly scared. And I'm talking about that fear that grips you till you can't really breathe. And you can't really think. And you can't even speak. Then you know what, what I'm talking about. You know that fear that can just grip you at any time, day or night. And it seems like it's always worse at night when it's dark. Uh, but he says, I did not, I did not give that to you. Um, you do not receive that from me. That's something that doesn't come from God. Fear comes from the enemy. And that's a, one of the tactics uh, he uses against us as Christians. Uh, because if he makes us afraid, you know, lots of times if you are really afraid of something, you kind of act out of um, impulse or instinct. You don't really think about what you're doing. And if he can get us that scared and that afraid, then we might make some bad decisions. Um... We might try to deal with things in a way that's not pleasing to God. And before we know it, we're in this deep hole. And we're so far away from God, we don't feel Him anymore. Um, and we feel like He doesn't hear us anymore. He feels like He's a million miles away. But He's always just right there waiting for us to cry out, Father God, Abba Father, I need you. I need your help. And He will find you. He will come to you. He knows exactly where you are. He will pick you up, dust you off, uh, wrap you in His arms of love. Um, and he will forgive you if you ask him to, and he will cleanse you and make you whole again. And that's what he does. He loves us that much. How many of you, if you have children, would not go to the ends of the earth for your children? As much as they drive you crazy and get on your nerves sometimes, and you're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with this child? You would still move heaven and earth if you had to for that child. Um, I don't, I don't know. I know that kind of love from my parents. I know my parents would do anything for me they could. Um, I don't have children, but I know what that kind of love is because I've seen it modeled by my parents toward me and my brother. Um, and so I can only imagine the love God has for us. And, you know, he, he's adopted us into his family. 
we were one of his, you know, um, growing up on my mom's side and my dad's side of the family, uh, none of us believed in step, you know, step cousin, step brother, step sister. We were just brother, sister, cousin, you know, um, of course, you know, my grandma, I remember on my dad's side, my dad's mom, when she passed away, she had, um, I think two grandchildren that were not blood. But they were her grandchildren. So that's what I'm saying. And that's the same way with God. He doesn't see us as stepchildren. He doesn't see us as, as a half-brother or half-sister. Um, he sees us as his children. You know, um, a true step-parent steps in and assumes that role. Not to take the place of the parent. You know, like if it's a stepdad, it's not to take the place of that dad. Or stepmom the place of that mom. But you still want to assume the role of caring for the children and letting them know they can come to you. Hopefully that's the way you feel. Um, I believe that's how I feel. I know my, my husband's sister, when she married um, her husband, now her little boy was probably about five. And he always called him Mr. Adam. Mr. Adam. But I remember on the day of their wedding, as soon as the ceremony was over, he looked at him and he said, So I do, do I get to call you Dad now? And that was just so sweet, you know. And he calls him Dad. And that is his dad. So that's the same way God looks at us. He doesn't see us as stepchildren or half-brother, half-sister. He sees us as his children, you know. And he loves us that much that he would do whatever it takes. He did whatever it takes. He gave his one and only son. Jesus did all that it took. He, he gave the ultimate sacrifice for us. And uh, he loves us so much. And he wants us to... Be happy and whole and healthy, mind, body, and spirit. So I us pray with you right quick, and then I'm going to get in my comfy clothes. I'm going to relax for a little while. Father, I thank you for this day that you've blessed us with. I thank you for a good week, oh God, that you've blessed us with. I thank you for strength and peace and comfort. And just, oh God, just I just thank you for who you are. I ask that you would be with us this night. I pray for those that, that are maybe fighting with the spirit of fear and maybe they're... Um, fighting against um, the voices in their head that tell them they've gone too far and, and they can't get back to you and and the voices that that tell them they're worthless and, and useless and they never amount to anything. Father God, help them to know that you love them. Oh God, despite all the mistakes and despite the times we mess up, you've adopted us into your family. Oh God, we are your children bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you would help them to realize that, to grasp that, and to just completely assume the role as your daughter, as your son, and to know that you love them uh, with every, um, every, everything they could ever imagine. God, that's how much you love them. Oh God, even more so, because our human minds can't comprehend the love you have for us. I just ask that you be with us this night. Watch over us. I thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, know you're valuable, you're cherished, you're loved, you're adopted. You've been adopted into the family through the blood of Jesus Christ. You're my brother, you're my sister. Not half, not step, but you're my brother, you're my sister. And I uh, hope you all have a great night, and I will see you all later. Good night.